Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton Hillers High School Playoff Softball on HCAM. And today, the Hopkinton Hillers come in at 12 wins and 7 losses, and they will take on Duxbury, who is 10 and 10 on the season. The Hopkinton Hillers are the 13th seed in the South Division I bracket. And today they are taking on 20th seeded Duxbury Dragons. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers defense. It is going to be Emily Whalen on the mound, Jill Cedia behind the plate over at first base. It's Bella Ansi, the second baseman, Megan Sullivan at shortstop, Alyssa McIntyre, third base, Emma Murphy from left to right, Kristen McCluskey, Katie Holly, and Jordan Chevery. And how about that Duxbury lineup as I bring in my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Well, it's a beautiful day down at field six here and a big crowd on hand today. Leading off for the Duxbury Dragons, <sighs> Lee Brandenburg, Aliyah Atkins, Jill Cosgrove, Kaylee Litchfield, Gabby Hutchinson, Emma Cosgrove, Olivia Bombardier, Renee Papp, Courtney Markey, Maya Zukowski. All right, there is your lineup. Lee Brandenburg, the center fielder, stepping in. And she will face Emily Whalen, who is out there for the first postseason game of the 2018 season for the Hopkinton Hillers. It is a nice 69 degree day out, a little bit of wind and some clouds in the sky as Brandenburg takes strike one. Don't know what the umpire called that an illegal pitch or something's wrong with the rubber. The umpires are going to come and check it out. Duxbury is one and four in their last five games. The Hopkinton Hillers two and three. So both teams a little bit of a struggle to finish the regular season. Duxbury averages seven runs per game, gives up an average of five. The Hillers score an average of eight and give up an average of six. So two pretty similar situations as far as runs are concerned, Larry. Well, I hope this isn't a repeat of Medway's uh, playoff battle last year where the, the um, MIA official wouldn't allow them to play. It was a rainy day, and uh, they sent everybody home because of some issue with the rubber. I don't know if it's the rubber or the wind-up for Emily Whalen. I think what the umpire is saying is that she steps off the rubber when she's throwing. At least that's the gist that I'm getting. Well, as long as she maintains uh, contact with the rubber, she can jump off and use that as a... Uh, it looks like the umpire here is going to take a look at her windup. Th th you know, there's been no complaints about her windup all season long, so, so I don't understand why there is now. Maybe there's a power play going on here with the men in blue. Uh, but the fire-breathing dragons are ready to step to the plate. First pitch was probably a no pitch. Now the umpires were saying that uh, she took her f back foot off the mound. I'm not see. I didn't see that on the pitch she just threw. Well, that's a nice thing to do in the first that, playoff that game. That back foot does come off, but it's after the ball is out of her hand, and that is totally legal. So we'll see. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that throughout the game. But I guess we're ready to continue on as this is hit in the air left side, and it is foul out of play. That'll make the count one and one. If you've been pitching like that all year and an umpire tells you you got to pitch a different way, um, I don't know. This is girls softball. This is not uh, NCAA college softball. That is down low, two and one. Just that high school softball. So it's an errant ball picked up by Katie Holly. We'll I'll see if there's any more... Uh, complaints as the game goes on, but everything she's thrown so far appears legal to me. That one is low. Three and one. I like the outfield there with Katie Hawley in center field, which would ordinarily be Lily Morningstar's position. This is hit in the air and that'll drop into center field in front of Hawley, a leadoff single for the center fielder. 
Lee Brandenburg, and that'll bring up the shortstop, Alana Atkins. I don't know how much pre-scouting Duxbury, the Duxbury Dragons did, but thou, not, thou shall not steal on Jillian Cedia. Emily Whalen, a 3.73 ERA this season, 11 appearances, 11 games started, a 5 and 2 record as that one's fouled away, nearly caught by Cedia. I don't think that would have been an out because it was nope. it straight back. Right. 62 innings pitched by the junior. She's got her stable mate in Katie Hawley, just in case. As this is hit high in the air, left side, and it is caught, one away. Kristen McCluskey makes the play. That'll bring up Jill Cosgrove, the left fielder. Coach Soderberg has switched Jordan Chevary and McCluskey. Jordan was playing left earlier in the, on in the year, and Kristen McCluskey was playing right. Swing strike. The Hillers, they had some tough competition to close out the season, included in those three losses are Norton and Holliston, and also Central Catholic. So it was three pretty good teams you lost to there. Well, you did have the Bellingham game, did you not? Yep, it was a great uh, mercy win in the Bellingham game. Runner takes off from first to throw up, and it just gets by the reach of Alyssa McIntyre. So a stolen base for Brandenburg. Throw was there in time, just a little off the mark. As a middle infielder, you gotta get over that bag quick with Jillian's rifle arm. We'll take you through the bracket throughout the course of this broadcast. As usually, very packed South Division I bracket as that pitches up high. Outfielders are playing a little bit shallow for the number three hitter. The winner of this game will advance to play fourth seeded King Phillip, who's 18 and three on the season, as that is caught by Emma Murphy to wrap up the inning. And we will head to the bottom of the first. It's a scoreless game on HCAM. Just about set for the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers batting order. Emily Whalen, the pitcher, starting things off. Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, batting second. Katie Holly, the center fielder, batting third. Emma Murphy, the third baseman, hitting cleanup. Jill Cedia, the catcher, batting fifth. Bella Ansi, the first baseman, hitting sixth. Megan Sullivan, the second baseman, hitting seventh. Jordan Chevery, the right fielder, hitting eighth. And Kristen McCluskey, the center or excuse me, the left fielder batting ninth. Larry, how about that Duxbury defense? Dragons defense today. Courtney Markey at third. Alana Atkins at short. Renee Papp at second base. Kaylee Litchfield at first. Left to right, Jill Cosgrove. Lee Brandenburg and Emma Cosgrove. Catching is Olivia Bombardier. Yes. Emily Whalen runs up to bunt. And Maya Zukowski on the hill today. And there it is, the Duxbury defense. Oh, and one on Emily Whalen. That pitch up high, good eye by Whalen, one and one. Emily, if, oh, go ahead, Larry. You no, know, if the folks see a little blur in white with green, they'll know that's Emily <laughs> Whalen running down the first baseline. It's hard for the camera to keep up with her. She's hitting a 531 this season as she falls that one away, one and two. Her new nickname is Flash. I like it. Flash Whalen. We got another year to work on that one. How about that batting average though? A team leading 531, 34 for 64 on the season. Impressive, impressive numbers by the junior. Up the left side, and it is gloved by the shortstop throw over, not even close. Emily Whalen with a single. That's that slap hit of hers to the left side of the infield. That means the uh, shortstop of the third baseman, if they get it, they get the longest throw. And Emily's two steps out of the batter's box when she hits it. That brings up the shortstop, Alyssa McIntyre. 
in there for a strike. Well, that's what the Hillers wanted, Larry. They wanted Emily Whalen on base. Let's see what she does on the on the base pass. Thought about a steal there, but held up. Smart move. 0-2. This is a fully masked Duxbury Dragon team. Melissa McIntyre hitting a 397, and that's right to the first baseman. Worst case scenario, a three unassisted double play. That's because she was wearing a mask. That'll bring up Katie Holly, the center fielder. I have a feeling she'll be a captain next year. Just got a sneaky suspicion. Well, she was just a step off that first base bag, but it was that ball was just hit in the worst possible place. A one and oh count on Katie Holly, who's hitting a 464 on the season. Fouls that one away. Nobody from Duxbury wants to go get that ball. With all the poison ivy in there, I think that one's a goner. 25 runs scored for Katie Holly. She fouls that one into the backstop. 16 runs batted in, four doubles, two triples, two homers for the junior slugger. And I think, adding on to your point, Larry, that Katie Holly and Emily Whalen, those will be your captains next season, if I had a guess. There's your one guess. Another foul ball long gone into the woods. Probably a lot of eggs in there this year. She's just a good all-around player. She can pitch, she can play the outfield, play the infield, good hitters, great speed, good eye. Two and two. Great helmet, everything. Pitch to the lefty, fouled away. The blue is asking for green, green ball. It's three balls back in there. We're going to run out of softballs here if this keeps up. We'll flip a coin, hey, you and me, there. see who's going in there. Yeah, Kristen, you, Kristen. That one is low. Katie hey, Holly battles up to a full count. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Hopkinton Hillers playoff softball. Alex Walton, our camera woman this evening. Emma Murphy waiting on deck. And Katie Holly draws the walk. One on, two outs. That'll bring up Emma Murphy, the third baseman, the lone senior on this year's Hillers team. Oh, no worries about the Murphys. Lauren Lulu Murphy will be on this field next year. She's a really good ball player. She could have made the team this year, but that limited playing, playing time. Runner taking off from first, and a nice steal for Katie Holly. Emma Murphy at a 444 on this season. 21 runs scored, 29 driven in, nine doubles, two triples. Did she get any Tri-Valley awards this year, Emma? That one is down low. I'll have to do my research on that one. Please. She certainly deserves a few. I know she was a candidate for MVP. Gets a piece of this one, driven into center field. That'll drop down. Katie Holly around third. The throw in is a good one, but not in time. And it's one nothing Hillers. An RBI double for Emma Murphy. And troubles coming to the plate in Jill Cedia. See how the outfield positions themselves for her. A great piece of hitting there. And now Jill Cedia will step in. She's a sophomore hitting a 345. But power. Yep, whole lot of power. Four home runs on the season. That pitch down low. 19 for 55 overall. Eight runs scored. 28 driven in. She's been a RBI machine this season. Down low. Whoa. Oh, didn't like that one. No, uh, I didn't like that one either. Jill Cedia is one RBI behind Emma Murphy for the team lead with the 28. 
Now Murphy with 29. Let's see what Jillian can do. That hit her, I think. Runner goes to third. And I guess it didn't hit her. She jumped out of the way, but that actually works out. Two and one. Outfield playing fairly deep for Jillian. Emma Murphy advanced on the pass ball. Cedia fouls that into the backstop. Two what a two. rip. Yeah, that was a good swing there. Good crowd on hand today. Yeah, very nice crowd out there. Good turnout for some Hillers playoff softball. Gets a piece of this one, but it's caught by the shortstop. And up before the Hillers plate one run, it is 1-0 Hopkinton as we head to the top of the second on HCAM. Top of the second inning, a 1-0 lead for the Hillers. 5, 6, and 7 due up for Duxbury. Gabby Hutchinson, the designated player, steps into the right-handed batter's box. Up the left side, gloved at third base. Throw to first, not a problem. Emma Murphy making it look easy, one away. Like a vacuum cleaner down there. Anything nearer she gets. I'll bring up Emma Cosgrove, the right fielder. Hopkins has played great defense this year, so Emily Whalen has uh, some comfort. Those kids behind her. 0 oh, and 1 count on Cosgrove. 0 oh, and 2. And Jillian Cedia swiped that pitch. So it tricked the umpire. There's strike three. She's going to run it out. Throw to first, not a problem. Two away. And I'll bring up Olivia Bombardier, the catcher. Olivia Bombardier. What is she hitting this year? I'm not sure. I was unable to find the statistics for Duxbury. She would have been a good fit over at Attleboro High School, the Attleboro Bombardiers. Sure. Now the fans know this is an elimination game. Winner plays on, loser goes home. The educated fans do, as well, that's right. fouled away, 0-2. <laughs> <and two. laughs> all playoff games are elimination. Winner go home. And we'll take you through the bracket. Marshfield is the first seed. They got the bye in this round. They'll play the winner of Wellesley and Plymouth North. As that is outside. North Attleboro with a bye. They'll play Braintree in the next round. The winner of this game advances to take on King Philip on Saturday at 3 p.m. as this is hit in the air. And drop by Cedia, a rare mistake. Bombardier reaches on the error. You know, yeah. That'll bring up Renee Papp, the second baseman. I wonder if the sun got the best of her there because it was just starting to peek out as that ball was hit in the air. Well, she should have ran out a little further and turned her back, and the spin would have kept it in her glove. Or Emma Murphy or Emily Whalen should have taken control. Sh strike one. Continuing on with the South Division I bracket. Walpole gets a free pass to the first round. He'll take on the winner of Somerset Berkeley and Brookline. As that is fouled away. And then on the other side of the bracket, Taunton, the second seed, will take on the winner of North Quincy and Milton. Silver Lake will take on Dartmouth next round. And Milford will take on the winner of Bishop Fian and Attleboro. Bridgewater Raynham will take on the winner of Natick and New Bedford. Throw down to first, runner slides back safe. One and one. Gee, she's got a gun. She certainly does. Lots of bullets in that gun left. Low, good block by Cedia, throw to second, and that is, I, I don't know about that call, I thought he, she got her, Larry. Bring it to the editing room. Let the fans see it in slow-mo. My view is a little obstructed, but I thought she got her. But in any case, Bombardier is credited with the stolen base. Up the left side, that is a foul ball, two and two. Renee Papp. 
North Attleboro has fielded uh, both a good softball and a good baseball team this year. Is hit in the air. Belanci calls everyone off and makes the catch. No problem. And that will wrap up the top of the second to the bottom of the inning we go. It's the Hillers leading Duxbury one to nothing on HCAM. Heading on to the bottom of the second, six, seven, and eight do up for the Hillers. Bella Ansi, the first baseman, Megan Sullivan, the second baseman, and Jordan Chevery, the right fielder, to take on Maya Zakowski. It's a one nothing lead for Hopkinton. An RBI double by Emma Murphy drove in Katie Holly in the bottom of the first as Bella Ansi takes strike one. Should mention that the boys varsity plays Monday at 3.45 or 4 o'clock. This is indeed a 4 o'clock game on Monday. 0 and 2 count on Otzi. That is in there for strike three. We'll bring up Megan Sullivan, the second baseman. Zukowski seems to be around the plate. Not well, the way this game's going, it's looking like we're going to have a pitcher's duel. I love duels. Who doesn't? We'll go seven today. I think so. Nice cut. Nice cut. Hey, right there, too, right there. Miller's baseball will take on the winner of Duxbury and Dighton Rehoboth, which is happening today uh, on Monday at 4 p.m. The Hillers, of course, will host. They are the second seed in the South Division II bracket. Two and one. Hillers girls tennis also advanced. They got a nice win yesterday over Silver Lake. Back to the pitcher, throw to first, no problem. Two away. Hillers girls tennis will play on Friday at four, and they will host. And then Hillers boys tennis also advancing with a nice win over Westwood. The boys and girls lacrosse teams have been eliminated. As this is driven into right field, that'll drop in a two out single for Jordan Chevery. Bring up Kristen McCluskey, the left fielder. Be sure to check out hcam.tv for all the Hopkinton Hillers playoff updates. We will consistently be keeping you updated with all the Hillers playoff scenarios. It's the best ticket in town. That's right. Kristen McCluskey, a freshman, hitting at 378 this season. Takes one low there, 2-0. And it's free. That's right. Can't beat free. No concessions, but free. That one low, 3 and 0. Looks like we have a couple of uh, gentlemen, one from the Army West Point, Tim Simos, and last year's Tri Valley MVP, Alex Reynolds, behind us. There's a strike, 3 and 1. I didn't think they gave you a break from the Army, did they? I guess sometimes they do. Okay. And we also have a former Hiller softball coach, Kylie Murray, back there. And this is hit up the left side, a diving catch by the third baseman. And nice catch over on the left side. And that will wrap up the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. It's 1 0 Hillers on each can. Top of the third inning, 9 1 and 2 do up for Duxbury. Courtney Markey, the third baseman, to start things out. She gets a running start and follows that one away. Hit uh, Jillian Seedy right on the right in the bean. You know, asking if she's okay, and Seedy laughs it off. Lee Brandenburg, the center fielder, do up next. Alana Atkins, a shortstop, do up third this inning. Emily Whalen deals, breaking pitch there, slow roller up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first. Nicely done by the Hillers infield. Emily Whalen saw. Rolling, realized it was a little bit out of her reach, but had faith that Megan Sullivan will get it done, and she did. One away. 
I think a little underhand toss there. Well, they were so close, might have been a better choice, but an out is an out is an out. That's right. Lee Brandenburg, the center fielder, steps in and takes a strike. Lots of lingering clouds around. No rain expected, though. Bunt fouled away, 0-2. Raylan deals, up the left side foul. The fire breathing dragons. Sound intimidating. We'll see what happens. And this is hit in the air and that'll drop into right field. A one out single for Brandenburg. She's having a nice day. Two for two at the plate. That'll bring up Alana Atkins, the shortstop. Sun's starting to peek back out. You know, I'm wondering whether the athletic department can uh, trim back some of those trees in left field, cast a shadow out there. That is up high. You'll have to ask them about that one. All right, I'll put a note in the mail. <laughs> One on, one out, the one out pitch. It's a bunt and that is foul. One Jillian, and one. Jillian just popped out of her crouch and grabbed that thing before it went fair. Nicely done once again by Cedia. Infielders are in on the corners. Brandenburg had a stolen, uh, steal in the first inning, did she not? She did. She's going to try it again, but this is hit up the middle. That'll get into center field. Brandenburg heading to third. A good throw in from Katie Holly will hold Brandenburg up at third. And then Atkins trying to advance the second is thrown out. A huge break for the Hillers. She doesn't like the call. I don't like the call either, but we'll take it. It's an out. I thought that was, uh, I thought the tag was laid on her before she slid back. I think, I think that was the right call, and I'm not just saying that because it, Helps the Hillers, that's my honest opinion. That was a good cutoff by Emily Whalen and a quick throw. And I think the girls are laughing a little bit because uh, I think they agree with me. Jill Cosgrove steps in, and this is a slow roller foul. Well, you can credit Alana Atkins with a single and a six to four out. Lee Brandenburg over at third, two outs in the inning. They sit here would tie up the game. And we're gonna have a little time out call here by Duxbury. They're gonna talk some strategy. Well, what could be the strategy? How about get a hit and score the run? Yeah, you can't really bunt here in this situation. You could, but it likely wouldn't go very well. Not quite Hopkins sure. could bring the corners in if they wanted to. And Emily Whalen is really, really. I'm not quite sure what this discussion is about. We had one earlier in the year with the Norton team after nine straight strikeouts by Kelly, whatever her name was. And I don't know what they could have been talking about. This is hit high in the air over to left center and making the catch is Kristen McCluskey. It remains a one nothing Hillers lead as we head to the bottom of the third on H Cam. Bottom of the third inning, top of the order for the Hillers. Emily Whalen stepping in. She's one for one today. A one nothing lead for Hopkinton. A huge break on the top of the third as Juana Atkins was thrown out trying to advance the second after a single. And we'll have to take a look at the tape on that one, but the Hillers will take it, that's for sure. I've done my survey. They all say she was safe. Well, seeing that I had an obstructed view once again because of the first base coach, so I'll, I'll go with everyone else on that. But hey, Hillers will take it. That's fouled away, one and one. What kind of obstructed view do you have? I had the first <laughs> base coach right in front of me. The other team's first base coach. Well, there was no histrionics by the coaching staff from the Duxbury Dragons. 
So um, they probably agreed with the umpire. The 1-1. One, one. That's low. Well, I don't know why in that situation you would even take the risk of advancing Atkins. I mean, you're definitely going to have two on with one out. Why take the risk? Look at how shallow they're playing Emily Whalen. And this is hit high in the air, and it is caught by the first baseman. One away. They might as well have seven infielders, the way they were playing her. Oh, yeah, they're expecting bunt. Alyssa McIntyre will step in. She grounded out her only at bat. I think she lined out, didn't she, into a double play? It was... You're right, unassisted uh, du double play. As this is driven into center field, she makes up for it with a one-out single. She'll be fun to watch the next two years. Certainly will. I'll bring up Katie Holly. So McIntyre adding on to that very nice 397 batting average heading into this game. Because that is hit foul out of play. How many swipes does Alyssa McIntyre have on the season? We'll have to dig into the stat sheet on that one. Certainly has a lot of speed, though. Well, second base is sort of being uh, unoccupied over there, and there she goes. And she will get the easy steal as it's thrown into center field. She'll stay put at second. Smart move there. And that is Alyssa McIntyre's fifth steal of the season. She's five for five. There wasn't a Duxbury player within 15 feet of that base. And this ball is whacked over to the left side, but it is caught by Jill Cosgrove, who was playing deep. McIntyre stays put at second. Two away, Emma Murphy to the plate. Emma had an RBI in the uh, first inning. And she gets a piece of this one over to right field and it's caught. A little trip up there by the right fielder, Emma Cosgrove, but she's able to regroup and make the catch. And that will retire the bottom of the third. It's a one nothing Hiller's lead as we head to the top of the fourth on HCAM. Top of the fourth inning, four, five, and six due up for Duxbury, Kaylee Litchfield, Gabby Hutchinson, and Emma Cosgrove. Well, this game, so far, a nice battle between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Duxbury Dragons. one nothing lead for the Hillers, and a good pitching matchup between Emily Whalen and Maya Zakowski. Up the left side, picked up at short. Throw to first, no problem, one away. Now bring up Gary Hutchinson, the designated player. Got a good student section out in center field. That's nice to see the students come down and support their fellow pillars. It certainly is. The pitch down low. 1 0 on Gabby Hutchinson. Waylon set to deal. There's a strike. Duxbury's had some chances, but have not been able to capitalize on any. Still a whole lot of time left, though, as this is driven into left center and caught by Katie Holly, two away. That'll bring up Emma Cosgrove, the right fielder. She looks so natural out there in center field, like she's caught a million fly balls. Katie Holly, I'm referring to. She certainly does. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Emily Whalen has got a, such a big target behind the plate. It's fouled away, 0 and 2. She's still working with a 17 inch wide plate, but Jillian presents a problem for the umpire. Emily Whalen has pitched very well, but has yet to pitch a 1 2 3 inning. 
but she will here. Strike three on Emma Cosgrove. One, two, three, they go. To the bottom of the fourth we go. It's one nothing Hillers on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth inning. Five, six, and seven do up for the Hillers. Jill Cedia, Bella Ansi, and Megan Sullivan to face Maya Zakowski, who's pitched three strong innings so far. This will be the last home game for the Hopkins and Hillers. Yep. That one is low. Maya Zakowski, the pitcher for Duxbury, a sophomore. And she's expected to be a big part of this Dragons team throughout the next couple of seasons. Pitch up high. Well, there's actually a couple crazy scenarios where the Hillers could end up with another home game, but actually by then it would be neutral site games anyway. So that one's fouled away. Two and one. Would this be a neutral site? No. <laughs> That's a stupid question. We're used to those from you. Yes, exactly. She'll see the lined out for only at bat, and she'll line this one up the middle. That'll drop into center field for a base hit. Look for Heather Sevo to come in and pinch run. No. And she will. Here's the pinch runner, Heather Sevo. Well, awesome discussion here. Or, or I think the umpire's just marking it down. So well, I have my numbers right? Is that a Sevo 14 or 17? 17. Bella Ansi will step in. Heather Sevo over at first base. Pinch running for Jill Cedia. Second baseman will be playing towards first base. That's going to leave a wide open gap because the shortstop is playing as if Bella Ansi might go her way, but that's not likely. I think there's going to be a swipe here. Now there's going to be a conference. Yeah, coach for Duxbury going to come out and talk to Maya Zukowski. Well, this uh, Hiller's lineup certainly not an easy lineup to pitch against, but Maya Zukowski has done a nice job for Duxbury. Certainly a promising young pitcher for the Dragons. As Coach Lombaretti will come out and talk to her pitcher. Do up next is Bella Ansi, and then we got Megan Sullivan. Coach Soderberg's got a couple of options here. He can have Bella Ansi bunt, Sevo to second, straight steal for Sevo. Bella Ansi can show bunt, pull it back. Bella Ansi hitting a 377 coming into this game. 10 runs scored, 23 driven in. There's a strike. No play on there. The 0 1. The bunt is down for strike two. She bunted at a ball there. That pitch was a bit high. Fouled away. Now I think she's just going to swing away here more than likely. Well, with two, two strikes on her, I have a feeling she'll be swinging away. It's a piece of this one, but it's foul. Bella doesn't pull the ball much, so I'd move that second baseman closer to second base. Lefty steps back in and takes strike three. One away, one on, Megan Sullivan to the plate. Eight two, eight 
That one low, 1-0, one oh. runner taking off from first, the throw up, not in time. This, oh, Heather Sebo came off the bag after the dive, and the tag was laid down by Renee Papp, two away. Maybe that's payback for that bad call earlier. I don't know, it looked like she was off the bag after the slide, the hand just came off. I agree, I agree. That one upstairs. So now two outs and no runners on for the Hillers. Sort of went in there, not with a straight slide, but a, almost a football block move. This one's fouled away, two and one. There's a strike. We got Jordan Chevery on uh, deck for the Hillers. Yes, we do. Is that one is low? Full count. Megan Sullivan on the season, batting a 261 in her sophomore year. Seven runs scored, seven driven in. It's a piece of this one up the middle, past the reach of the pitcher, picked up by the shortstop, low throw, but it is in time. And that is going to wrap up the bottom of the fourth to the top of the fifth we go. It's 1-0 Hillers on HCAM. Top of the fifth inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for Duxbury. Olivia Bombardier, the catcher, Renee Papp, the second baseman, and Courtney Markey, the third baseman. A one nothing lead for the Hillers as Emily Whalen continues to pitch on. There's a one, two, three, top of the fourth. Whalen hoping for similar results as that one's fouled away. Hopefully Emily will make it a quick inning. Don't want to turn the lineup over to the leadoff hitter. Whalen deals, breaking pitch, fouled away. Looked a little off speed to, to me. 0-2. Wind starting to pick up a little bit here at field six. This is hit high in the air over to center field, ranging a bit to her right and making the catch is Katie Holly, one away. Can of corn for Katie Holly. I'll bring up Renee Papp, the second baseman. Emma Murphy creeping in at third. That one is high. Ooh, lost her bat for a minute. She all right? <laughs> Laughing it off. Hit in the air over to left center and it's caught by Katie Holly who has just been so busy out there in center field today. That'll bring up Courtney Markey, the third baseman. Fouled away. She ran up like Emily Whalen does. Big contact in the front of the batter's box. Ms. Markey did. Courtney Markey. She is a senior. That one low. Line up and the pitch. That one outside, two and one. Kristen Sullivan's waiting for something to do out there today. Whalen deals, and this is foul, two and two. What seed was the Duxbury Dragons? 20th. 20th seed. Are they just happy to be here or? That one is low. That was a tough bracket to make the postseason, so I'd say any team in this bracket certainly deserves to be here. 
They just missed uh, being put out. That one's low, and Courtney Mackey draws the walk. That'll bring up Lee Brandenburg, the center fielder. One on, two outs. There's a strike. Lee Brandenburg is two for two today. With a swipe. Yep. Up the middle, glove by the third baseman, throw to first, it's dropped. And the lead runner going to advance to third. Bad drop over at first base. And throw back to first as Brandenburg thought she was out. She thought she was out and started walking back towards the dugout, it looks like. And now the umpire is going to have a discussion. The home plate ump called her safe. The first base umpire's call. But Bella stretched with her wrong foot, with her left foot as opposed to her right. So sort of a cross up there. The umpire's confirmed she is safe. So Brandenburg reaches on the error. Girls uh, softball players are so civil, unlike the boys. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to touch you with the glove so hard. Well, if the situation continues to get more tense, who knows? Maybe the attitudes will as well. That one is low. Well, you just hope if you're the Hiller is that that error doesn't turn into any runs. Got something for Bella to work on the off season is her footwork. Otherwise she's played pretty much a flawless first base. There's a strike. One and one. Pitch up high. Last season, the Hillers advanced all the way to the semifinals in the South Division I bracket and ended up losing to Milford, 6-3. to three. Milford went on to win the state championship. That one down low, runner from first is going to take off, trying to draw the throw from Cedia to send the run home. Smart move by Cedia, holding on to it. Only bad things can happen. An overthrow, a drop. Runner in third can scamper home. If Julia De Benedetto makes her return next year, they would have a pitching staff of dreams. Let's see what happens next year. Strike on Alana Atkins. It is a three and two count. Up the left side, gloved by the third baseman, throw to first, and this time Bella holds on to it. So the error was made, but no damage done, and we will head to the bottom of the fifth. It's 1-0 Hillers on HCAM. Set for the bottom of the fifth, a good crowd on hand here at field six to take in some Hopkinton Hillers playoff softball as stepping into the batter's box is Jordan Chevery, and she takes a strike. Oh, and one. Now we're hearing some noise out of the Hopkins girls. Shevery gets a piece of this. That'll drop into right field, a leadoff single. Well, after a couple scares, you'd certainly love some insurance here as Kristen McCluskey will step in. At least the girls know how to run bases way better than the boys. Drives me crazy. Kristen McCluskey hitting a 378 on the season. The bunt fouled away. Hiller's playing a little small ball here. Hey, 
Wind up and the pitch. Bunt pulled back. Runner stays put at first. Thought about taking off. Duxbury lost last season in the first round of Bridgewater Raynham, 7-2. Hoping to take it a step further this year, but right now Trail the Hiller is 1-0. The bunt up the right side. Glove the throw to first, no problem, but the lead runner does advance to second. Great job, great job. So they get the one out, but there is a runner in scoring position for the Hillers. Look for her to slap the ball to the left side. Duxbury's trying to sniff that out. Emily Whalen steps in. There's a strike. Well, it's been brilliant pitching for Maya Zakowski and Emily Whalen as we have the pitcher versus pitcher matchup here. Gets a piece of this up the middle, past the reach of the second baseman. Jordan Chevry will stop at third. A one out single for Emily Whalen. Signs being given to Emily Whalen. I think she's got the green light to steal anytime she wants to. Alyssa McIntyre stepping in. She's one for two today. Successful steal would take the force off. So it'll be runners on the corners for the Hillers. One out. Big opportunity for Alyssa. I guess it's the home plate umpire's responsibility to see if Emily leaves early. Runner taking off from first, and they won't throw to the second base bag. They're actually pulling a little trickery there as they had the shortstop come in and grab the throw in case Chevry try to take off her home plate. You see that invisible leech, leash on Chevry? Up the middle, slow roller, picked up at short, throw to first, and it is no problem. They just got her, much to the dismay of the Hiller's first base coach. And the third base coach, I might say. Got a little smile on his face, but he would have liked that run. Two on, two outs, Katie Holly at the plate. I'd say she's overdue for a hit, Larry. I'd say she is too. Gets a piece of it, fouled away. Almost took out Coach Soderberg there. Hey, five. Hey, you're all over. Let's go. Scary scene down there at third base. She's just such, such a sound player. Fun to watch. There it is. Up the middle, past the reach of the shortstop. One run in. Here comes Emily Whalen. It's 3 0 Hillers. And sliding safely into second is Katie Holly. A two RBI double. And the Hillers lead 3 0. She saw that bobble by the center fielder and she didn't even hesitate. Now she's in scoring position for Emma Murphy. Jordan Chevry and Emily Whalen both scoring. And that's exactly what the Hillers wanted. They Indubitably. Put, they put themselves in a much better position as Emma Murphy steps in. Upstairs. Katie Holly getting the job done. That wasn't a dribbler, that was a shot. She was hitting a 464 coming into this game. Get your calculator out. That one down low. And almost uh, halfway to third was Katie Holly, but she goes back. One bobble by the catcher and she'll be over there, guaranteed. It's now 18 runs driven in on the season for Katie Holly as this is hit in the air, foul territory, two and one. Got to watch out for Aaron fly balls near Tracy Murphy. She got one in the eye a few weeks ago. The awful thing if her daughter did it. It was a good luck shot. <laughs> This is hit high in the air over to the second base side and caught for the third out, but the damage has been done. The Hillers plate two more runs and it's a three nothing lead as we head to the top of the sixth on H cam. Top of the sixth inning and the Hillers offense has put themselves in a much more comfortable position. It's a three nothing Hillers lead 
Uh, stepping into the batter's box for Duxbury will be Jill Cosgrove, the left fielder. The winner of this game advances to take on King Phillip at King Phillip on Saturday at 3 p.m. game time as that one's fouled away. Is King Phillip in Rentham or Norfolk? I believe Rentham. Well, head down there, do some shopping at the outlets, catch a good softball game. That one is low, one and one. Don't forget I wear a 38 waist. <laughs> this is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop, a little trip, but she's able to get the throw off, no problem, one away. Melissa McIntyre is just having a great day at shortstop. Throws right on the money. I'll be a little critical. So she could have charged that ball a little bit, and made it less close, but her father had to look at the film and well, she recovered from the trip nicely as that pitches up high to Kaylee Litchfield, the first baseman. Big gap up the middle. Gets a piece of this. This is towards us, and it'll land in the Hiller's cage. Cage. Continuing on in the top of the six, Bella Ansi has shaken off the injury and she is back in the game, ready to go. Certainly a tough athlete, Larry. Absolutely, her mom sort of made her way over here to make sure her daughter was okay. Wind up and the pitch up the middle and it's gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first, no problem. Two away. Well, it's been the Alyssa McIntyre to Bella Ansi combination throughout a lot of this game. Really, really solid infield. Now we'll bring up Gabby Hutchinson, the designated player. That one up high. I'm not saying anything, but it's a long drive back to Duxbury. That's not over yet. 2-0. Down to the last four out, so they got to make something happen. Waylon deals. This is hit in the air. Foul territory. Bella Ansi makes the catch for the third and final out of the top of the six. It's a 3 0 Hillers lead as we head to the bottom of the sixth on H Camp. Bottom of the sixth inning, coming up for the Hillers, five, six, and seven. Jillian Cedia, Bella Ansi, Megan Sullivan. We'll try to add a little insurance against Maya Zikowski. A nice three nothing lead, two more runs added in the bottom of the fifth, courtesy of Katie Holly, a two RBI double. That score, Jordan Chevery and Emily Whalen. That pitch low and inside, one and oh. I'd like to see one of her textbook Titanic blasts right now. Wind starting to pick up. That one is low, 2 0. Oh. She'd have to hit that ball through the wind, but she's strong enough to turn that wind around. Maya Zukowski set to deal up the middle. Love by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem, six to three. One away, that'll bring up Bella Ansi. Yeah, Coach Soderberg is gonna make a change here, looks like. So Bella Ansi will come out of the game. Tara Kester is going to step into the batter's box. Her brother Ryan is playing on the boys' varsity team this year. Playing some nice third base. Also a good basketball player. Hey, four, like you can. So Tara Kester gonna come in for Bella Ansi, who was a little shooken up last inning after a collision with the dugout fence. Trying to make a catch. Swinging strike. Swung right over that pitch. Bella did stay in the rest of the inning and made a couple plays to close it out on the defensive side. 
She may re-enter, she's getting a little ice. Tara gets a piece of this, and that's gonna drop in for a base hit in the left field, a one-out single. Wow, that was on a line. That'll bring up Megan Sullivan. That was Tara Kester's sixth hit of the season. Couldn't come at a better time. Coach Soderberg gonna have some words for Megan Sullivan. Let me put on my Nostradamus hat here. Show bunt and send Kester. It's very possible. Well, Tara has a lot of speed as well, so I could see that happening. I'm not a big fan of those masks. I've said that all year. What's the purpose? Maybe the pitcher. I don't know how you could get hit in a kisser playing first, second, short, or third. Just don't know. I don't know. Let's put you out there without a mask. And I'll, I'll, play, balls bare, I'll play bare handed. <laughs> put you in that pitcher's circle. Absolutely. Nope. Maybe 60 years old, but a reflex is like a cat. There's a strike. It's a piece of this, hit high in the air, foul territory and caught, two away. Nice play by the first baseman, first base woman, excuse me. That'll bring up Jordan Chevery. Some fans late arriving here with an inning to go. One on, two outs. Jordan Chevery, two for two today, also scored a run. And we'll fist this one down the right side foul. Great play by the first base coach. But you know it's free after the fifth inning. That's right. Price of admission uh, certainly be pretty expensive here at times. That one up high, running gonna take off from first to throw over and she is safe. Stolen base for Tara Kester. That developed a little slowly. Comes into the game, gets a hit, steals a base. Nice day for the freshman. Zakowski deals. Chevrolet gets a piece of this over to center field and caught for the third out of the bottom of the sixth. The Hillers lead three to nothing as we head to the top of the seventh on H cam. Top of the seventh inning, a three nothing lead for the Hillers. Duxbury down to their final three outs. And we're gonna have a pinch hitter here for Emma Cosgrove. Line up and the pitch. Regan something or other. One and oh. And uh, get the name of the pinch hitter in just a moment. It is Chloe Lavalette as this is hit High in the air and caught, one away. I would suggest they don't hit it anywhere near Katie Holly. Pick another, pick another player. Duxbury down to their final two outs. Olivia Bombardier will step in. Gets a piece of this, that is ripped past the reach of Emma Murphy, it actually went off her glove, but that was hit so hard she was unable to pull it down. Great attempt at it though, one out single for Bombardier. That'll bring up Renee Papp, the second baseman. That was a great attempt by Murphy, what a dive. Yes. She got high up to try to make that play. I had a flashback to when I used to play, the hot corner. One is in there for a strike. Duxbury cannot yeah. afford to. Uh, used to call you laid out Larry. Laid out Larry, yeah, exactly. Up the middle, glove by Whalen. Throw to first a little high, but Belazzi pulls it down, two away. A little smile from Emily Whalen. The Dragons are down to their last out. 
Bombardier advances to second. Courtney Mackey, the third baseman, stepping in. If they're going to breathe any fire, they better start right now. Ball one. No chances on the base pass for the Dragons. Waylon deals, swinging strike, one and one. Line up and the pitch. Nice, Just outside. Nice try, Jillian. Try to steal that pitch. That was a pretty good frame job. Yes. Wayland deals. This is hit high in the air over to center field, and it's caught by Katie Hawley for the third and final out of the game. The Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Duxbury Dragons three to nothing and advance to take on King Phillip in the first round of the postseason as they get by here in this preliminary round game. We'll take a quick timeout, come back and wrap this game up. The Hopkinton Hillers defeat Duxbury 3-0. The Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Duxbury Dragons 3-0. The Hillers score three runs on nine hits, commit two errors. Duxbury, no runs, two hits, and no errors. Your player of the game, well, there was certainly a lot of candidates, but we're going to have to give it to Emily Whalen. She just pitched an absolute gem, a shutout, seven-inning victory over Duxbury. And it was just a brilliant performance from the pitcher's circle. She was able to strike out two hitters, and although there were a couple jams, she was able to pitch her way out of both of them. And she also had a great day at the plate, going two for three. Also scored a run and stole a base. Emily Whalen, your player of the game, as the Hopkinton Hillers defeat Duxbury 3 to nothing in the preliminary round game in the South Division I bracket. The Hillers advance to take on third-seeded King Phillip at King Phillip High School. And we're certainly going to try to bring you that game on HCAM as well. Emily Whalen, the player of the game, the winning pitcher. Maya Zakowski pitched a great game for Duxbury, but is your losing pitcher today. The Hopkinton Hillers with an impressive win, and they now stand at 13 wins and seven losses overall. For Alex Walton on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching this presentation of Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you soon, folks. Tom Nappy here with today's star, Emily Whalen. Emily, you pitched seven shutout innings. You went two for three at the plate, and you also scored a run. A great day by you. Uh, can you just talk about this game and pitching against a tough Duxbury lineup and wh what you think led to so much success pitching against this very good Duxbury lineup? Well, Duxbury's a really good team. They're really competitive, and our team played really well. I'm really happy with the way we played. We only made one error, one or two, and I'm really happy about that. They had my back. It was really good all, all around. And uh, can you talk about the defense? Uh, the defense out there just had your back, and they made some great plays out there today. Oh, yeah, the defense was so good. We were solid. I was so happy with it. Katie in the outfield, you know, Emma in the infield. Everyone was stepping up, and everyone was making a good play. And you guys have a young team this year featuring just one senior, but you seem to have a really good chemistry out there. What's it like playing with this group? Oh, it's so awesome. Everyone has each other's backs. We're always there for each other. It's, it's awesome out there. Well, congratulations on a great performance and hopefully many more postseason games to yes. come. Thank you.